Hello. Uh, so I'm waiting for the presentation, but uh, I'm Dennis Tortum, and I'm a research assistant at the Open Documentary Lab, and I've been researching VR, so I'll talk a bit about VR and uh, probably related to the stuff we've been talking about. So basically, I will talk about 3D capture uh, and the technique of embodied montage for VR documentary. Hopefully, it might add to the language or like how we talk about VR. So to start, uh, how can we create a virtual reality documentary? And what are the recording instruments to do that? One way is to capture 360 video. And this is a screenshot from the New York Times piece, The Displaced. So the piece presents a 360 video that moves linearly. The user can look around and explore. And it is shot with multiple cameras. The videos are stitched in post-production to create a panoramic video. And in this case, the realism is high, but the interaction of the viewer with the system is limited to moving her head. Images do not re react to the user's input in this case. Then how can we create a space that the user can navigate in and interact with objects? One way is modeling the environment, such as Nani de la Pena's Project Syria. And another way is to uh, record places through 3D capture. And virtual reality works such as Ascent in the eyes of the animals, uh, animal and the enemy use this method. And these works record the environments and objects through technologies and techniques like Kinect, laser scanning, and photogrammetry. And in these works, the images, at least partially, are created through 3D capture. So what these instruments do are that they record proximities and they record the spatial relation between physical bodies. And they convert the world into, uh, into computer graphics that can be then processed in game engines. And what these do is that with these technologies, artists are able to represent the real world with spatial and responsive images, images that constantly process the data coming from the user and change accordingly. And I would like to talk about uh, documentary works, which capture the real world through 3D capture and manipulate them through game engines. So basically, I will talk uh, what the properties of these images are. And I will offer a creative technique for real-time 3D virtual reality works, embodied montage. So let's start with soft images. Uh, this image is from a real-time VR project that I'm working on, and it's a recreation of a hospital in Istanbul. Uh, and it's a project in development, but with this project, we can go deeper into the production process and uh, what these images are. So this is a video recording, but uh, imagine that you're wearing a headset and walking in the space. So regarding these images, uh, what I'm interested in are two domains. One is image as data set, and the other is image as rule set. Uh, 
So the images data set refers to data that are obtained through 3D capture, and the rule set refers to how code is then layered onto the virtual objects and spaces. First images data set. So this piece you saw was captured with a laser scanner, and laser scanners are being used by architecture and engineering companies to especially make uh, precise measurements. And I think this is rather a transparent technology to see the workings of 3D capture. So what happens here is the scanner emits lasers in all directions, measures, measures the time the laser travels to an object and back to the sensor, and calculates the distance of each point. This way it collects the coordinates of each point the laser hits. And then the new image comes, but as a text file, as a data set of coordinates. It contains depth and spatial relationships. So this is not just an image, but also a data set for spatially replicating the objects and places that the device has captured. And as you can see here, there are 14 million lines, and each line uh, refer to the coordinates of a point and the RGB data. And the one interesting thing is, like unlike other type of computer-generated imagery, these images have an indexical relationship to a place. They are based on their registration of data from a physical space. And they constitute the new representation of reality. So the technology is being deployed to capture crime scenes and present these as evidence in court. And there's a recent uh, forensic technology organization report on laser scanners, and it reads this. The data provide a completely objective analysis and highly credible evidence in a court of law. Data obtained from scans document the entire scene and may provide spatial evidence first missed as relevant patterns or evidence not obviously visible. So I want to talk about the evidence that is missed by the human eye but caught by the machine. So this is reminiscent of what Paul Virilio calls sightless vision. So images created by machine viewpoints. And these technologies produce a diverse nonfiction imagery that re relocate the human vision uh, to, like a, to machine vision. And through these point clouds, the human observers, observer is granted an insight look to the synthetic perception of the machine. And through the VR headset, the machine vision becomes embodied by a human observer. And this image you can see is uh, seen from the point of capture, and it is similar to a photograph. However, the image is not fixed. So if we want, we can move away from the point of capture and skew the perspective. And right now we are uh, seeing outside of the apparatus's point of capture, which you can't do with photographic images. And in this case, uh, we can even see the blind spot caused by the apparatus on the left side. And here's a more clear image of the blind spots. And this image is uh, a synthesis of two different uh, registrations of uh, laser scans. And the other quality is the transparency. So the properties of objects can be altered through 3D capture because they're essentially data. And as you can see, 3D capture creates an X-ray architecture. And the captured place can be architecturally reconstructed. Any corridor can be connected to any other. Objects can be rearranged over and over. The image and the space is not fixed. And then also this image is not only a data set, but also a responsive rule set. What happens is after you capture these images, most of the time you put in a game engine like Unity. And in Unity, code can be embedded to objects, to environments, and to the first person camera. For example, a chair in the rule set might be hard and brown, but if you look at it, it can explode, or like if you approach it, it can move farther away. And these rules don't need to resemble the rule set of physics or reality in any way. And the other thing is, user's body and gaze is constantly tracked in a virtual world. Thus, actions can be set in relation to user's bodily input. So these images are compiled of data and software, and they're soft images. So the image is no longer a passive and fixed representational form. It is no longer a stable representation of the world, but a programmable view of a database that is updated in real time. So my question is, these images, when combined with a VR headset, an optical tracker, can react to an observer's bodily movement and attention. So what are the creative, uh, creative potentials of embedding code into objects 
spaces and the first perception gives us, a first person perception gives us. And I will argue that it is embodied montage. So I'll take a step back. This is uh, Eisenstein, a Soviet filmmaker. And in the 20s, he develops his notion of film editing called montage. And he, rather than creating sequences in which shots follow each other seamlessly, he places contradicting shots right after each other in order to create a meaning. So do two shots, when combined, create a third meaning that does not exist in neither of the shots. The heart of montage lies in creative juxtaposition, in counterpoint, and the basic principle is to give birth to concepts, to emotions, by juxtaposing two disparate events. So this is Strike, and in Strike, Eisenstein crosscuts the killing of the workers with the butchering of a bull. The intercutting between these two images creates an associative link of butchering in both instances, and this leads to a heightened emotional reaction in the audience. And here's a brief clip. Okay, so let's fast forward almost 100 years. This is uh, Jean-Luc Godard's stereoscopic 3D film, Goodbye to Language. And in the film, there is a moment that pushes montage out of the boundaries of the cinematic medium, and I think into the, uh, into the area of and domain of virtual reality. In one scene, a woman and a man sit on a park bench, flipping through a book. Woman's husband comes to the scene and ho holds her from the arm and takes her away. In this moment, the two cameras which set up the stereoscopic image, which are precisely distant from each other to recreate binocular human vision, diverge. One camera stays on the man, while the other follows the woman and her husband. So what happens is here is the 3D image separates into two distinct images, and each is seen by one eye only. Not like a superimposition here, but like each one of your eyes sees a different image. And this simultaneous juxtaposition of images by projecting them to different eyes takes montage to a logical extreme. The scene becomes an in-eye editing. The montage here is not temporal like Eisenstein, but it is embodied. It is created through projecting different images, ideas, inputs onto different eyes. And it is montage uh, produced by addressing each eye differently, by separating perception from characteristics of embodiment. And this is a genesis moment of what I would like to articulate as embodied montage. So the definition is embodied montage is a technique in real time VR experiences created through decoupling action and perception to create new pairings, creating conflict and dialectic. In an instance of embodied montage, the link between action and perception is intentional, but does not mimic the real world experience. So in a virtual reality headset, you can separate one eye from the other. You can separate height from the body. You can separate field of vision from sight and separate movement from vision. And such separations then allow artists to make novel combinations between characteristics and actions of embodiment and their consequences. It is best to elaborate on the embodied montage through several examples. And the first one is Oscar's Ascent. Uh, and in Ascent, the user takes the point of uh, view of Oscar's father, who is a former soldier served in the Chilean army during the Pinochet military regime. The piece recreates the experience of witnessing a mass execution. In the piece, the user looks for several seconds to a place to move towards, the, uh, to move towards where she is looking at. And it is a link made, made possible by real-time computation. So this interaction mechanism combines the action of looking with the consequence of moving, creating a non-mimetic link between these two acts. The montage creates a third meaning which is not inherent in neither the action of looking and consequence of moving. What emerges in this juxtaposition is that looking means moving, thus acting and being involved, similar to the artist's father who was involved in the mass execution by witnessing it. And similarly on notes on uh, similarly, notes on blindness attempt to recreate the experience of a blind person through embodied montage. In the piece, as the user stares at dark, uh, dark, dark and empty places in the environment where the positional audio is coming from, shapes of objects start to form. Uh, 
So in this piece, the act of staring is combined with creating unseen shapes. This pairing recreates a blind person's experience of perceiving objects by facing directly and attending to the sounds created by it. And both these examples are gaze-based, uh, but embodied montage can occur through any other action. And there are not that many examples, but uh, I attempted to uh, try some different techniques in the hospital piece. So this one is an attempt to create embodied montage that includes movement. So when the user enters the operation room, the field of view slowly expands. And this instance links moving into a specific space with a change in vision. The effect is a mix of subtle dizziness and a relief, a lessening of claustrophobic space. And another technique is influenced by goodbye to language. So if the user spends too much time in the operation room, the image on one eye starts getting blurred for a beat. And because of binocular rivalry, the brain cannot register the blurred image. The user still sees the operation room clearly. However, the blurring of the image on one eye creates a haptic effect, a feeling as if someone is tapping on the user's eye, which creates discomfort. And these are rather early examples, but this principle has broad applications. Any movement or interaction can be abstracted, caused to trigger something unexpected, including body movement, gaze, and bodily gestures. So the images of virtual reality are not fixed, but also the body in virtual reality is not fixed. And with embodied montage, we can create new meanings through creating new links in the sensory motor schema. And also since both like all these techniques to a degree are alienating techniques, I think they put a critical distance to mediation, which is similar to the reflexive documentary mode, so that the user can have the ability to contemplate the mediation and preserve the distance between representation and the real. This method does not recreate reality, but provide formal elements to the user to interpret the experience. And artists can express things indirectly by letting the viewer interpret novel bodily and environmental situations. I would like to end with the opening epigraph of Raoul Ruse's Poetics of Cinema. It goes, what is a symbol? It is to say one thing and mean another. Why not say it right out? For the simple reason that certain phenomena tend to dissolve when we approach them without ceremony. So even though virtual reality offers a heightened sense of presence and realism, it is important not to overlook the ceremony needed to approach worldly phenomena. Thank you.